Professor, now that Israel has formed an emergency wartime government and also stepped up its offensive in Gaza, you know, we also saw that IDF has bolstered troops and tanks along the border. The reservists have also joined. There are speculations of a possible Israeli ground incursion into Gaza. What, according to you, is Israel's strategy in the coming months likely to be? Well, I might not be able to uh, elaborate about the strategy because it's being forged anyway now. With, now, as you uh, well mentioned, that we have an emergency government, which is a united government. Uh, but I can tell you what the goals are, what are the targets of. And the targets is total elimination of the military and governmental capabilities of this Hamas, this terrorist organization. So these are the goals, this is what we're going to achieve. It might be in different ways, I cannot elaborate on that, but this is the goal and this is what is going to happen. And it's much time and means that it will require. Right. So we know that your country has promised a sustained and a long-drawn campaign, but help us understand how will Israel define success in this case? Will it just be putting an end to terrorism by Hamas, something that you mentioned right now, or also taking control of Gaza? Well, as I said, we know what our targets are, and uh, until they are accomplished, we'll do whatever it takes. Uh, it might be this kind of other kind of controlling the, uh, the, the area, the population. What we need to understand, and people in the world should understand, that Hamas is not the Palestinian people. The Palestinian people in Gaza are a hostage. They are hostages of this Hamas organization, extreme organization that is holding them with power and using them as human shields to defend himself and his ideology, his cruel ideology. This is a very cruel, uh, fundamentalistic organization. So let's also talk about the horror of the attack and the cruelty and the brutality that Hamas unleashed on Israel and also, also what's happening in Gaza. So over the weekend, there have been unspeakable images of whole families shot in their homes. This is something that you've also talked about, kidnapping of Israeli children, women, youth and even elderly people. So has this incursion exposed Hamas for what it is? I was listening to an anchor yesterday and she was talking about how the Hamas fighters fought like, a kam like kamikaze, you know, as if like this is their last battle. So do you think that this attack has also exposed Hamas to the world? Yes, exactly. But this is what we were saying for a long time and the world didn't understand and didn't, maybe, you know, didn't have the capacity to understand how deep it is, how strong, how strong. And then, but I think that ISIS was the first time that the world realized how, how, how long and how far cruelty can go with this ideology, this religious ideology. And this is not Islam. Don't be mistaken. This is not Islam. And this is not even the Palestinians. I have Islamic Palestinian friends. We have so, such good, good relations, warm relations, even I would say. The, these are not Islam. These are extremist fundamentalists that come with some cruel uh, jihad ideology. And now that the world understands what it is about, they are, from my point of view, brainwashed people, brainwashed people. Only a brainwash uh, can do uh, uh, this kind of evil, of cruel things to others.